Hey everybody, this is the first episode of my tutorials featuring Photoshop and, photo and photography. In this tutorial, I'll be going over some basic concepts such as layers, uh, adjustments, and combine the two and you get adjustment layers. So <clears throat> let's get started for seeing a picture. I've gone through some of the crosstown classic, but I, I like this one. Pretty good picture. So in Bridge, favorite program, I'm going to go double click on it. So what we have here is opens up in Photoshop is your picture. This is CS4, so yours may look a bit different, your layout may look a bit different. Basically, you have your layers, you have channels, you have paths. And then you have, um, this may be, this is new with WCS4, it's pretty awesome, it's your adjustments. Maybe on a workspace called adjustments just for this, because it's pretty amazing. So what you want to do first, is you want to look at the picture, you want to see, alright, this guy's, we have, we have, we got football player focus, you have them all blurred out, we're good. Good picture, you know, you, if you zoom in with Alt and your mouse wheel, he's pretty in focus, it'd be good enough. And no one's gonna look at this that close anyway. So, double click on your hand here to get full screen, or double click on the magnifying glass to get 100% zoom. Zoom. Let's do the hand. All right, so up here I have my rulers open. They're displaying a pixel right now. You can have them in different units, like percent. Percent's good if you're trying to mark off different things. Uh, inches. Yeah, it's all right for some things, I guess. I don't know, but I like pixels. The rest I'm gonna go over is layers. You have a uh, get a you have a whole layer section here. You can make new layers. So let's do a new layer. It'll say, hey, what do you want your layer name? Let's name this um, face. And you'll see why in a second. Now, you can go ahead and change your transfer mode here now. And I'll go over those in a bit. Or you can, you can change your color. You also change everything later on in, in right here. It's pretty handy. Let's just do OK. Maybe a layer called face. You know, it's got an eyeball switch turn on and off. Nothing really happens, though. It's blank. You can see what happens. It's just totally blank. This black and white checkerboard means that it's transparent. Nothing's there. So let's say I want to draw something. Let's draw a smiley face. So we got a brush tool right here. Maybe, maybe hiding. Maybe have to hold on it. Hold, uh, click and hold and get your brush tool. Mine's at a thousand. That's kind of big. I'm going to bring it down to about Let's do about 100 pixels. It's about good size and no hardness. Hardness refers to uh, how much pressure. So like zero is like totally like uh, you know it's really airbrushy kind of is the word. I guess that's the word. Or 100% hardness is like totally like hard on the edge. So talk about your edge. So that's just so they want to keep in mind. Here you have your color switcher. You can switch you pick your colors. You have a foreground and a background. So let's say I want to paint in a yellow color. Now what you can do is you can select the colors here or you can type them in yourself. So let's make this pure yellow, 255 red, 255 green, and 0 blue. Now let's make this one black, 0, 0, 0. Now let's see when I get back to my original colors. You can press this button right here, or you can press D. Another neat little keyboard shortcut that goes with this arrow right here. This one that's called X. You press X, it switches between your foreground and your background. It's quite fun. Not really. So let's get back to yellow. 255, 255, and 0. Let's draw a smiley face here. A face. You know. And then you have a smiley face. You know. Yay. We're happy. Now, you just made, made new layers. Let's say someone in your book doesn't like this. I can always turn it off. If I drew it right on here, I can always, it's on its own layer. You can see. You know, if I drew it on here, uh, it'd be a pain to get off because let's say like after I do undo's and stuff, you know. So let's say go on here, draw my smiley face on here. Notice I'm on my original layer here. If I go to erase it, oh no, I'm erasing the picture as well. So I gotta go undo it all. Now for undo is Control Z. Now usually Control Z usually doesn't want to undo back one thing. You want to usually go back multiple things. Go under edit, you can step backward or alt control Z. Step forward is shift control Z. And that's also um, redo is shift control Z. So that's pretty handy. So there's my face on a separate layer. Now, let's you can you can delete layers by uh, right clicking and do delete 
or you can just drag them to the little trash can. Let's talk about adjusting a photo. You can go to image, go to adjustments, and you have all the different options, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, and so on. Now, we'll look at this picture, and we're seeing it's kind of dark. You know, I want to make it a bit brighter. Let's go into uh, adjustments, go to brightness, contrast. Let's brighten this up a bit. You can move this out of the way so you can see. Now what happens when you do this, let's make some more contrast. What happens when you do this is it's changing the original layer. Look at this. It's changed in here. If I can do control Z, get back and forth, it actually changed the picture. If I save this, that's good. You don't save it as a separate file name because I made changes. But if I don't save it as a separate file name, I will never be able to get the original picture back. So you're wondering, wait, how can I do that? Well, this is an answer to that. If you click on this little cookie, it looks like an Oreo cookie, you know, with um, half the top eaten. What you do is you then click on it, and you have uh, your same adjustments pretty much. Brightness contrast, levels, curves, exposure, and so on. Let's see brightness contrast, play this a bit. Now CS4 opens in this little guy here. CS5, I mean CS3 will open as a uh, as its own little window. Now there's a way to do this. I know there is. Have it open its own window, but I forget because that's what happens when you don't use CS4 in a while. It's I'm used to using CS3 in school. It's kind of annoying. Then no, whatever. Okay. Anyway, is it here? Maybe. Maybe it's in here. Now, okay, whatever. All right, so you can fix your brightness here. Now, something to note is look down here when I change this. It's not changing at all. On the other one, it did. This is an adjustment layer. You make it a, you make it look kind of intense looking there. All right, so what this is, you can turn this adjustment on or off. So as long as you save as a PSD or a TIFF, T-I-F-F, you can get these, these layers still here. Kind of cool. If you don't, then, you know, it'll flatten out. It'll basically do one of these things. Basically flatten your image. You'll get this kind of thing. Notice it's brighter now. You'll save as this, and you can't get your original picture back again unless you undo it. So there's that. Brightest contrast is cool. It does a lot of things. Very simple. Very simple to use. Anybody can do it. Other few things I want to show you. Let's say I want to brighten this photo, make this photo a bit more saturated, because it's the camera you've used, the Canon Rebel. Uh, it's a bit desaturated. I don't like that. So let me make this bright again. I was a Nikon kind of D3000, but uh, I brought two cameras into this game, probably because it would I mean, have the switch lenses. In fact, that was the reason. It's a bit less bright. Okay, there we go. So, use saturation. You got this panel. Now, you have master controls here, where you're saying, all right, I can increase saturation of everything. You'll do be doing that mostly a lot. You know, you just all right, that's a bit better right there. See a difference? You can turn this layer on and off as well. But here's the thing. I don't want central to be more saturated. I want north to be better. So, go back to zero. And you have this tab here. It says, hey, look, I can choose reds. Now, there's no orange section. So what I do with this, I go to yellows. And I move this guy. You can move this guy around. You can move this. You can move this, this. Play around with it. But I'm going to move him so it's in the orange range. And I'm going to bring up the saturation on orange. Problem is it does it for the field, so bring this down and bring this in a bit. So there you go. Let's not bring it up that much, bring it up a tiny bit. Alright, so you can see a difference here. Okay, let's bring this in a bit. I don't want the sidelines to be so intense. Okay. So, not much of a difference. Let's go show you I don't know what I'm doing. I should not be making this if I don't know what I'm doing. That's about right, it's a bit better, right? You got more color. Now with the reds, this is what I really want to focus on. Let's want to make sure the central guys aren't that standing out. Bring down the saturation of them a bit, but notice it changes my oranges. So all I do is go in here. Let me darken them. Lightness is cool. It makes things lighter and darker. It's kind of fun to play with sometimes. Bring this back out of it. There we go. So you can make them, you can make them pink if you wanted to. We're not a really tough team. Because they're not that good. You know, you can bring them all the way down. Bring them, then it keeps them some saturated though. So yeah, and then you can bring the blues. There's a section for blues. Yeah. Photoshop's awesome. And then even your greens, you can bring down the greens. 
If you know grass isn't really green, actually, Photoshop calls grass yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to say, hey, I want you to be desaturated a lot. I'm going to select this. I'm going to say, hey, you're desaturated too, but not that much. Because that desaturates my oranges. And it's, it's, it's fine tuning. We'll get into how to get exactly later. So, those are two really neat things. Play around with other things like levels and curves. I'll show you curves real quickly. It's a bit complicated. So you have the straight line here. This is saying it maps blacks to blacks, whites to whites, and everything else in between lin linearly. Now, if I make this curve, this line a curve, you can see, oh, it darkens. Make it higher, it brightens. So let's say, let's say I want to brighten the image a bit. Okay, let's turn off this brightness contrast and this hue saturation. So brighten it a bit. Well, what if I want to make these more contrast? It's not really good contrast right now. I can just bring the blacks down. That brings the whites down too. So I'm going to bring the whites up. Sorry, wrong thing. I was on the wrong layer. That just shows you once again I don't know what I'm doing. So bring the bright whites up, bring the blacks down a bit. Not a whole lot, just a bit. And you get a pretty intense looking picture. I mean, that's kind of intense, I think. You know, it's pretty sweet. I'll play around with it. That's how I learn all this stuff. I learn by messing with it. Mess around with it, you know, learn, play around, explore. It's always fun to do it that way. Until next time, Matt Camp.